ready to start? Oh my god, I've been here for an hour ready to start, and you're just in your room yelling at your penis. <laughs> Everybody and welcome back <laughs> to, um, to a somewhat familiar but not so familiar podcasty type thing. It's been two years since our last podcast. When what? When is the actual last one uploaded? I'm gonna go look. Yeah. Well, I'll probably get to it faster. Bitch. You're a bitch. Let's take a look. No, don't do it. Ah, I can't find it. Yeah. Where's the playlist? I've got the fucking dashboard controls, my dude. I'm going to find uh, it real got fast. It. I already got it. December 11th, 2016. God damn it. <laughs> no, July 2nd, 2017. Boom, that's the newest one. Okay, so yeah, it's been uh, like two years since our last podcast. And here's exactly what happened uh, the last time was... I was already just over, just absolutely swamped in shit that I had to edit, and I didn't fully understand how audio compression worked. Not file size compression, but, like, the way you keep the loudness balanced out so that it's not clipping and sounding like shit the whole time. So I was manually re-listening to the entire podcast and putting gain on the low parts and bringing down the high parts for two to three hours of recording every time. And that used to be um, uh, Tenseken who would do that, but he got to the point to where being a father, he was no longer capable of doing that. And so I just made a judgment call. If we don't have somebody dedicated to doing that job, we're not able to work on that right now. Um, flash forward to two years later, and I actually know how to automate that with like two clicks. So there is literally nothing stopping us from bringing this back. Um, however, super was the one that brought up the fact that, you know, because this is something different, like we've already discussed several different ways that we want to go about this, this time, this isn't exactly the bro op radio podcast anymore. Um, we looked at a couple of different possible titles, all of them that I liked, but one of my favorite things about bro op is that it's really just a collection of inside jokes, um, that we are sharing with our community. So, um, we wanted to share another little inside joke that you guys are on the outside of until now. Um, Chase, why don't you explain what Club F is? My dad can't sit still for longer than like two weeks without building something. And uh, back in my hometown, they were going to build, they were going to tear down the big uh, water tower and, and make a, a newer one. Well, they left the strong like legs of the water tower up and they were about to tear those down. And my dad ran out there cause it's on uh, some property next to something he owns. And he was just like, wait, 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 don't, don't, don't tear that down. I'm going to use those. So he built a shed around those legs. So I, I mean, this is a fucking huge shed, huge shop, like tornado couldn't take it down if it wanted. And we just started having meetings out there, like me and Jesse and our friends. And we had uh, we had a pool table, and we had like a couple couches, and we'd sit out there and we'd just play poker and pool. And that slowly became Club F. I don't, I, I'm not even gonna try to tell you where that name came from because that was a kind of a just a me and Jaeger thing from like some weird church thing from forever ago. But uh, yeah, it just slowly became named Club F. <laughs> Yeah. And that's what we called it and hung out there basically every night. And even before it had a name, you know, when I first met these guys, I had just moved from another town. I was very upset about the move. Um, I didn't really like where I had moved to, but I had never really had friends until I moved to their school. And I met Chase and the our connection was base, could be boiled down to something as simple as, oh, you like strong bad cartoons? cool <laughs> and so <laughs> like we became friends he invited me to i think he just called it a shed party that time it was his birthday and we were all spending the night in this spooky giant shed and the moment i walked in to the shed it was just halo it was halo combat evolved on the original xbox just blasting out of these speakers that they had hooked it up to and projected against the inner wall of this enormous fucking shed. And just a whole bunch of people being like, Hey, what's up, dude? And I was just like, I have never seen anything like this in my life. Like it was, it was super interesting. And I know that, uh, Chase, I told you this a long time ago and you were absolutely just mind blown about it. 
but I was just like, well, you know how when you were growing up and you got made fun of for making for playing video games and you were like, I have no fucking idea what you're talking about. Yeah. And, I, and I think that's part of why when I walked in and saw everybody playing Halo and just goofing off, I was just like, I'm home. <laughs> like, because where I used to live, I got picked on for playing video games. I did not fit in. Yeah. And so this dead later became toot fest if you watched our um if you watched our april fool's video those are the toot fest cartoons the first kind of creative working arrangement chase and i had was um i chase did you pirate um flash or was it i'm me? sure yeah i'm pretty okay. sure i did and it, it's funny because i like making jokes about this this is not exactly how it went down but chase was essentially like hey do you want to make flash cartoons and i was like cool and he was like okay dope and he sat in his chair and told me ideas for flash cartoons <laughs> and i would make them pretty um, much and that's kind of how our attempt at machinima went too he bought a thing that wasn't exactly a uh a capture card and we attempted machinima and you know we we attempted a lot of dumb projects up until bro off but that shed and meeting in the shed was kind of the beginning of it. And like, like you said, they started calling it club F. And so this is going to seem like a stretch, but um, I have posted an image in the discord chat that I'm going to make the background of this first video. And the reason I went with this image is because I see this in the comments a lot. I see a lot of people saying almost this phrase, watching bro up videos makes me feel like I have friends. And that's why I originally liked certain Let's Plays like Game Grumps is that it's a distilled feeling that I don't see in any other art form where it's almost like friendship in a bottle. And so outside of this whole like anytime you hear us be like, well, what should we call our fandom? What should we call our supporters? What goofy catchphrases should we have outside of that? I would much rather feel cozy than feel like a real YouTuber or Twitch broadcaster. Like, I, I think that that's one of the things that people latch onto about our channel. And so that's part of why whenever Chase suggested club F a while back for something, I was just like, this, this sounds right because, um, it's an inside joke and it really represents what it's like to just come over and hang out with friends and shoot the shit while doing nothing. And that's kind of what we're about. And, uh, so that's what I want this space to be. Um, but a few things are different back whenever we did the first podcast, we aimed to always have four people on. And, uh, that was, I used to be, I used to be overly inclusive about bro up. I used to be like, we have to be four people and we have to all be on the same page. And that was ambitious, but not quite right. Um, because number one, I think four people is too many people for a podcast. Like, oh, period. it was way it, too it, many. We, we kept on getting into not exactly arguments. But, like, I didn't really get to talk that time because yeah. we were all kind of trying to manage talking. It might have worked if we were all in person, and I kept trying to make that happen, but that was hard. We don't all live in the same place. Yeah, um, lots of crosstalk, too, like, like, a lot. Yeah, and so when we were talking about it, I was like, you know, if we bring this podcast back, I want it to be two people. And he was like, maybe three in certain cases. And I was like, yeah. So that's what this new podcast is going to be like. It's going to be two or three people. Um, and I think it's something that we can handle. Um, now Chase, I know you're, I'm sure you are ready to jump right into the topic of the evening, but I have one more thing that I want to do as a part of this podcast. I do want to do like our fastest, like five second reviews of like all the games that we were able to get as a part of our, uh, partnerships this year. God, that's a lot. Okay. Well, I'm just going to spit them at you. Okay. So here's the, the quick and dirty version. This has been a pretty nice year for us. Um, we were offered a couple of partnerships that allowed us to get free review keys of up and coming games or games just on sale. And that has resolved one of the biggest bro problems, which is we need multiple copies of games in order to stream and record. And they're able to provide multiple copies of games often. Uh, I'm just going to start spitting things at you that I know you played. Uh, the surge. Oh shit. <laughs> I do not like that game. <laughs> I enjoyed it quite a bit and people enjoyed my stream of it, but it's no dark souls. Um, yeah, Let's like that, that's a worse knockoff of Dark Souls than uh, Lords of the Fallen. And that's bad. <laughs> the Blackout Club. Uh, uh, I would never, ever play that game by myself. But it was okay with you guys. I really enjoyed it and would love to play more, but I get it. Dead Cells. 
That game is awesome. I love Dead Cells. I played Observer and did not like it. <laughs> Observer is like almost like a point and click style game that's set in a cyberpunk setting. I didn't care for it. Cargo Commander was a game that I was gifted by Real English Rage. He's a huge fan of that game. I was having a hard time getting into it, um, but uh, it's clearly got a huge fandom. See, Gunpowder on the Teeth was fucking horrible. And the developers should feel bad. Wow. It, lo it looks really good. It's got a really good aesthetic. And then it's like the most amateur level design I've ever seen. Hack Tag was fun with candy for a hot minute. But then it was more annoying than anything. Angels fall first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How was that one, Jesse? Oh, I hated it. And I tried really hard to get him to play with me because I thought it looked cool. <laughs> Forge Battalion was actually a really interesting concept. It was a... Uh, it was a RTS where you could design your own units, but I was hot garbage at it. Overcooked 2 is a great improvement on the first one. Uh, Hover was kind of interesting. Hover is essentially a jet grind radio like. Um, it looked terrible yeah. when I watched you play it. <laughs> Immortal Redneck is very intriguing. Immortal Redneck, if you guys didn't get a chance to see that, was um, a first person shooter roguelike. Terrorium was just awful. It's attempting to be like a uh, uh, imitation of Pikmin, but it's not good. Rico. Yeah, that's a game. Uh, <laughs> I did not have fun in that one. Bar Loan Sales was really fucking cool. Um, that's a game that's got like basically no dialogue or narrative at all. And uh, you just slowly, organically figuring out how to operate this land ship and sail it across a desert. Very, very interesting. Grip Combat Racing is very cool, too. It's essentially like a, uh, a Wipeout-style game, but with cars with, like, spiky tires. And they did recently come out with a free update that makes it more Wipeout-styled with uh, hover games. Or hover... Sorry, hover cars. Um, Forager. Uh, Chase, you might actually be able to talk about Forager more than me. Hold on, yeah, let, I'm going to look at my Steam library real quick, because I have played the shit out of Forager, and I don't know how many <laughs> hours I've got in it. Okay. Uh, let's see, I guess it's under your games, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, well, it's not as much as I thought. Uh, I've played it for 12 hours, but that was over the course of, like, two days, so <laughs> I played it probably six hours at a time. It, it's a pretty fun little game. Like, it, it looks like it needs to be on an iPad or something. Like, it's, it's kind of very indie but mm -hmm. uh i had a lot of fun in it because you can basically get your islands like automated where the stuff will mine itself and like you can just sit there and like try to do all the puzzles and dungeons and stuff all the while your, your place is like just gathering shit for you like it, it's a fun little game it's super addictive i highly recommend it uh boss guard i played for like a second it seems like an interesting concept but not enough to keep my attention um agalos uh, i like that one i haven't played that near as much either let me see. but uh i really like that one i would like to go back and f actually finish that game uh, it's pretty yeah. fun agalos is uh it's meant to be an imitation of an existing nes game but i've forgotten the name of that nes game so i only really know to say it's like a uh like a medieval fantasy metroid like I i'd say metroid is probably giving a little bit too much credit but it's still pretty cool uh steambirds alliance is not my cup of tea. Um, it's meant to be like an MMO bullet hell. I really just don't think massively multiplayer games work in 2D. I, I, I just don't. Um, How to Be a Real Dude was so bad I refused to stream it. <laughs> so, thanks for the Good. free copy. I hated it. Uh, Killing Floor 2, I got a chance to play with uh, Nick and Huh. And it was way better than I expected. It's essentially like a better version of Left 4 Dead, in my opinion. Oh, really? Oh, that's yeah, good. I sincerely enjoyed it. Um, you can barricade doors in that, which is fun. Um, and uh, it's got, like, perks you can level, and it's got, like, in-between phase buying, like in uh, like in Counter-Strike or something like that. Um, we've got a couple we haven't had a chance to play yet, uh, including uh, Draugen, uh, Journey of Life, Warhammer Hammer, Vermintide 2, um, and Brief Battles. So I can't speak to those yet. All right, how do you want to start this off? I figure we'll just go through uh, the conferences as they happened. And uh, if you didn't watch it, then I guess whoever did 
uh, can just talk about it. And if neither one of us watched it, then uh, sucks to suck, I guess. <laughs> Chase, I have a question for you. And this is kind of an open question for anybody listening to this. So please, please, oh, please respond in the comments so that I know whether or not I'm crazy or not. Um, I was talking well, okay, about, about something in particular, <laughs> not in general. Wow. Um, I was talking to Ian about this the other day. And uh, I remember the thinking back to the E3 where the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4 were unveiled and being so underwhelmed by them while several people, notably younger people, were more pumped. Flash forward to now, where every E3 since then to me has seemed pretty disappointing. Ian was kind of like, this was an underwhelming E3, but... Several, I've seen several people online say that it was a good one. So my question to you and to anybody listening is, has E3 gotten more and more stale over time? Or do you think it's like a subjective thing? Like, do you think it's because I'm older? Jim Silver in the comments says E3 is indeed getting less impressive by the year. There are some good shows, but it's kind of stale. What do you think, Chase? I still definitely look forward to it every year. Because like, I, I still look at it as like, my nerd Super Bowl, mm -hmm. like, I, I, but the, my nerd Super Bowl has also kind of bled over into like AGDQ and SGDQ, and that happens twice a year. So that's like SGDQ is in like two weeks. So I'm looking fucking forward to that too. But E3 has gotten a little staler over the years, and it was especially more so this year when Sony was like, "Nah, fam." I'm not going to show up. You're not worth my time, bro. Yeah. And then on top of that, and I've already said this to you, but like the E3 before the new consoles come out is always shit. Cause mm -hmm. I mean, they're not going to show you any of the new games. They want to show that next year. So they can be like this, this, and this is launching with this console. You know, they kind of did that a little bit with halo infinite, but like we already knew about halo since last year. So mm -hmm. they were just there confirmed it hey please buy the new xbox we're gonna have a new halo on it if we're just gonna go in order um i personally think that the microsoft conference was the best one and it was still weak like yeah um, i agree I'll, I'll give you an example they were definitely teasing my dick the whole time because they kept being like we know that you want to play on whatever platform you want and that you want to be able to play with your friends no matter what platform they're on and i was just like Dope, dope, dope. They're going to do it. They're going to do the only thing I care about. They're going to announce cross-platform multiplayer and cross-save with, like, everything. Like, they're, they're going to really push that and be like, e Xbox is a platform of unity, and we just love games, because that's really what the verbiage was like. And they were like, which is why we're pleased to announce that your Game Pass is also on PC. And I was just like, who gives a fuck about Game Pass? <laughs> Like, that was the big thing of their entire conference. Hey, check out Game Pass. And I hate to say it because it's gonna sound like a real fucking dumb thing to say. But doesn't Game Pass and things like Game Pass kind of make you appreciate those games less? Like, uh, like you I know, know, when I had Game Pass, I was like, oh, hey, here's a bunch of games on here that I want to play but never did. But I didn't fucking play them. Like, like, you know, the Crackdown went straight to Game Pass. And now there's a connotation associated with that. If something's going straight to Game Pass, whether it's true or not, people are assuming that that means that it's not worth. It's not quality content. Yeah, I don't know. I, I guess it kind of it kind of gives you that Netflix mentality because it's just like, yeah, they've got all these shows. I'll watch it later. I'll play exactly. it Exactly. Yes, it does do that. Like, I don't know, but I think that they're on the edge of finally making the decision they need to make and, like, on the edge of finally making the advances they need to make. And they're, it's it's like they were, they were going to make so many more announcements this year and they were like, yeah, we're not really ready to announce those, but we're not rewriting the script. Like, that's really how it felt to me. Yeah. And, like, you know, take... I'll, I'll go ahead and ask you right now. What was the number one thing that made people go, oh, Xbox One E3? I guess the new console and Halo. Like, they didn't really have anything else. Okay. I'll give you that. But what was the one thing that people walked away from Xbox's conference talking about? Keanu? Keanu. But Cyberpunk 2077 is not a fucking, like, exclusive well, you see, that, that's where that's where they lucked up this year because without Sony being there, they were the only 
show multi-flats because the the switch might as well be an ipad it's about the same strength you know it can't it ain't gonna play cyberpunk 2077 get out of here with that so yeah. like microsoft had their chance to be like okay we're showing this we know it's multi-flat but it's at our conference come pay attention yeah yeah i am definitely stoked for cyberpunk and i'm glad that they're not rushing it but i have a hard time getting hyped for something that's that far off like, yeah, I know. Me like, too. I could see some of the most dope shit ever, and I'm just like, I'm. But, but when? <laughs> like, yeah. I, don't know. I, I really, really. Now, there's no way they could ever enforce this because delays happen. Like, sometimes legitimately, sometimes not so much. AKA Kingdom Hearts <laughs> or Final Fantasy 15. But, um, you know, they, there should be some sort of rule at E3 where you can't, you cannot announce something that's not coming out in the next year. Mm. maybe two years like you're just not even allowed to show it like okay. I, I wish that was a thing but there's there would be no way to enforce it because they could be like yeah yeah well this, this is gonna come out next year and then roll around to about six months before release and they'd be like yeah we gotta we got to push that back a little bit it all just kind of gets me thinking about like the, that's why i asked is it me or is it the conference you know it gets me thinking about this is going to sound fucking heavy, but I don't care. The symptoms of depression, because like when you're experiencing the symptoms of depression, sometimes the things that you used to enjoy no longer really get you going. And I'm just sitting here looking at Battletoads like it's fucking Battletoads. I should be excited. <laughs> well, <laughs> like when that logo came up, you know, I watched it at Williams with uh, him and Higgy. And mm -hmm. uh, when that logo came up, I think they are too young to have played Battletoads. Like mm -hmm. no offense, but I, I'm pretty sure they are. <laughs> But, no but offense, that came but up. you were born later than me. <laughs> yeah, but that came up, and I was just like, oh, man, Battletoads. And they were like, huh? And I was just like, just watch. This is Battletoads. And then it, it got it come up, and I was just like, what is this art style? Like, I, I do not give a shit about that game now. It looks terrible. Okay. Here's a game that I'm weirdly interested in, uh, but I feel like I shouldn't be. Minecraft Dungeons. Yeah, I, I'm not. Yeah, but I, and I know you wouldn't. I knew you wouldn't be. But But it's like there's no reason I should be into it. There's no, nothing <laughs> like I think it's just I like the art style because they they've kind of nailed what is right about the Minecraft art style. But hell, you excited for Gears Pop, too? <laughs> no, I wish they would <laughs> stop talking about that. Yeah. Um, are you excited for Dragon Ball Kakarot? Uh, we talked about this last night at my house. I don't know if you were here yet. Uh, I, I was. I just wanted to hear it again. You were. OK, yeah. But um. No, I'm not, because uh, uh, I've played the story of Dragon Ball Z about 150 times now, because mm -hmm. that's, like, all they fucking put out, you know? Like, even even Xenoverse, with its cool little twist of being like, okay, they're fucking up time, so that's why we've got to go back and, and to these points in history and play these parts again. That was okay the first time around, mm -hmm. but then, then they just rehashed that again with Xenoverse 2, and they've, they've rehashed, like sell or say in saga to sell or to boo rather like 50 times like who who the fuck doesn't know that story now if they're a dragon ball fan yeah like who who wants to see that again i agree i absolutely agree it's um it's gotten to the point where i don't know if this is going to be a comparison that most people can relate to but it's gotten to the point where dragon ball's turning into dynasty warriors because that was a it absolutely that was is that was a series that's basically just like 12 or 13 different adaptations of the same old Chinese book. Like, it's just yeah. the same fucking thing over and over and over it's again. Almost, it's almost a FIFA game with no new characters. Um, okay, I have a, a burning question for you. Okay. Are you hype or not for Fantasy Star Online 2? Uh, I absolutely am. Okay. Uh, we, were talking, we were talking about this yesterday, too. Uh can't remember who it was it was either colin or higgy or maybe it was ian i think it was ian yeah ian was just like who gives a fuck that game came out like eight years ago and i was like yeah i know but they were supposed to translate it back then and they just never did and now it's gonna come out with all the content and that and fantasy star online one was my first mmo ever so like i'm at home there and I, i've been wanting to play two ever since it came out but they never you know brought it over here so now I'm fucking hyped to be able to play it. It may suck ass for all I know. It may be some like free to play bullshit game. I don't know. I'll just have to wait and see. But hell yeah, I'm excited to play that game. 
So they showed the Outer Worlds, which we already we already know what that is from. I don't know if it was at E3 last year, but it was announced not too long ago. You know, it kind of looks like a Fallout type game. Uh, it, I think it's going to be on Epic Store only, so a lot of people probably just rolled their eyes. But it's also going to be on consoles. So I think that game looks interesting. Uh, I I would like to try it. I'm not completely sold on it, but it looks pretty cool. I don't know if you. What do you think about it? It's weird. I am in this funk of like I'm not sure that I can give a damn about anything that even resembles a Fallout game right now. And it's not it's not anybody's fault because I know that these are like developers that were former you know uh, project developers that are no longer with Bethesda working on it. So like it's not like it's a it's a corporate thing. It's just, I don't know if I care. I, I'm having a hard time bringing myself to care about it. Originally, it looked really good, but, you know, it comes back to that whole thing. Is it me or is it the conference? I don't know. I can't really put my finger on why I'm not terribly interested. Yeah. And then they showed that Bleeding Edge game from um, uh, Platinum. Is it Platinum Games? I don't remember it. No, it's from like, Ninja Theory. I remember why I don't remember anything from this, because I was just like, what is this weird like knockoff Overwatch that I'm it's, looking at? Like, yeah, I have no interest in it. It's just another Overwatch. Like, yeah. ah, fuck it. We'll skip that one. Yeah. Um, Ori and the Will of the Wisps. I've not played Ori in the Blind Forest, but it looks the hella dope. So I hope that game's cool. Let me ask you something real quick. Okay. And this, is, this doesn't have to go into the edit. Are you planning on going through every single game that was talked about? in e3 uh, I'll, in this I'll probably skip some of these because we've already talked about a few okay keep it keep it up then okay uh minecraft dungeons we've already been over that uh what about, what about star wars jedi fallen order what do you think about that one i am ashamed to say that i am not interested in it at all yeah i i it ought to be i wanted to be but it looks bland as hell <laughs> like the the only thing I'm slightly excited about is the the combat actually looks like Sekiro. Now I don't know if it is because I can't tell what the button layouts are, but just from watching it, it, it almost reminds me of Sekiro of how you have to break their guard and then you can kill them. So mm -hmm. that's kind of neat. Um, they showed that Blair Witch game. I don't I got give a it. shit about Blair Witch. Absolutely fucking bait and switched by that because everything about it looked like looked like somehow Xbox had obtained the rights to Silent Hills. <laughs> like I was I know. I know. I got yeah. I felt oh, the same way. I was so hurt by that. Okay. Um we've only kind of talked about Cyberpunk, mainly Keanu. What do you think about the actual game? Um mm. Again, like kind of what I talked about a, a little bit earlier is, is that like I'm having a hard time getting hyped for it until it's closer. It looks excellent. I certainly want to fucking play it. All it's really doing is giving me hardware anxiety. <laughs> like, am I going to be able to play it on my PC or am I going to have to play it on a console? I get that. Even though I just built this one, I, that even worries me. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. like real talk. Um, I'm going to skip over some of these. Like I said, I don't even remember what spirit fair is. So fuck it. We've talked about battle toads. I'm not excited for it. I don't remember what legend of ride is. looks like garbage. Uh, Microsoft flight sim. <laughs> this, this seems like it might be in your wheelhouse. What do you feel about that? You know, uh, I'm going to tell you when we were live streaming it and talking about it in the live stream, everybody was like, the graphics look amazing. The graphics look amazing. And I was like, yeah, the textures are high. And we're looking at it from a distance, but pay closer attention to the fact that there's like no anti-aliasing. There's like no like shaders. Like all we're like we're just looking at some really really crispy like playsets. <laughs> like, and besides the fact that I've never been terribly interested in flight sims, I like flight mm. combat games. Okay. Oh yeah, William's the one that likes flight sims. That's yeah. Why. Yeah, um, I'm I'm a, I'm not, I can't say I'm excited for it. What's that word? Whenever you're like excited for other people who are excited for it, <laughs> like I'm yeah. I'm happy for for them, but I I couldn't really get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. Um, Elden, Elden Ring there, though, right? like what the fuck is Elden, Elden Ring gonna be, dude? I'm I'm hyped for it. I know we didn't see next to anything about it, but like. Man, I hope it's the new era of Dark Souls. God, like, me too, dude. Uh, it looks 
just that little bit of lore we got from it, like dude talking, like I'm, I'm pumped for that. I hope it's amazing. And I, I've got faith in, in from software. Like, don't get me wrong. I like Sekiro, but I'm in no hurry to play that game right now. I still haven't beat it. Uh, I might beat it sometime this summer, but uh-huh. it's about all I can really say about Sekiro. I'm just, I'm, I like it, but I'm not in any hurry to play it. Right. Uh, Gears 5. I haven't played a Gears game since 2. I kind of don't care about them anymore. Uh, yeah. Have you ever played any of them? I still haven't, and I. Uh, it's one of those stupid things where, like, I really wanted to play the remastered, like, uh, the remastered, I guess, original trilogy or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, um, um, sorry, I spaced. Okay, I was wanting to play that remastered original trilogy, but I saw all these comparison um uh pictures that made it look like it wasn't they had fucked up some of the scenes like they had fucked up the way certain things looked and so i just never did do what i had originally planned on doing in that regard Mm -hmm. okay um i've i've barely touched dying light one higgy is super pumped for dying light two um i i don't really have anything to say about it like it looks cool that's about it Nick and I played Dying Light 1 uh, through a, a Chrono sale. Uh, Chrono provided us a couple of copies that we were able to play co-op, and it would have been really fun if my computer hadn't been fucking up the whole time. <laughs> so, like, what what resentment I have isn't even their fault. Like, But but uh, I remember when we were watching the E3 where it was announced, Candy was like, that looks cool. And I was like, yeah. huh, okay. Yeah. Now, now, something I am pretty hyped for is tales of arise which i guess is how you say it it may be pronounced different if it's if it's some sort sort of land or something within the game mm-hmm. but this this will be the first tales series game that has been in like 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 they they're all kind of cartoony you know mm-hmm. looking they they don't they kind of like got chibi animation or uh characters when they're fighting and stuff um but, but they've said They've said that with this one, they really want to push the boundaries of the Tales series because they haven't done that in a long time. So they really want to change this one up. And it, it looks super anime. So if you don't like that kind of thing, you probably don't like it. But uh, I hope it's like a huge open world and like they're, they're really looking to, to change their formula with this one. So I think that's cool. And I'm, I'm hyped to see what they do with it. Mm-hmm. Um, I am disappointed that we didn't see any Halo Infinite gameplay. I am too, very much. Like, like they showed that little cutscene that was, it kept saying, you know, end game engine, and I'm just like, big whoop de doo. Like, yeah. <laughs> who cares about that? Show us, show us him running around and shooting some stuff, even if it's like 30 seconds. Give us anything. It comes out next year. <laughs> I agree. Uh, don't get me wrong. I really enjoyed that trailer, but it was almost like a lot of setup for not a lot of payoff. Oh, yeah, I agree, too. So the last thing we can really talk about with Xbox is what do you think about their console, their new one, everything they said about it? Refresh my memory because it wasn't memorable. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, well, I'll just go off of some stuff that Dan's Gaming said because I watched I watched him talk a little bit about it, some highlights of when he was co-streaming it like you were. And he was just, they kept being like, you know, we're talking about frame rates. Oh my of fucking God. 20 FPS. Frame and Dan that no just, one's ever seen before. Yeah. Dan was just like, well, that's, that's fucking old news to anyone with a computer. <laughs> like, yep. Who cares? Who the fuck cares? And then on top of that, they seem to be really splitting all their stuff with, um, with PC these days. Like why the hell would I want an Xbox anymore? Yeah. If I can just buy it on PC. Well, to me, and I people have heard me say this for a while, to me, Xbox needs to fill the void that Steam opened whenever they were trying to start those Steam machines. Because to me, the Steam machine was kind of like a console-like, entry-level gaming computer. And I was like, you see, that's what's going to get my friends into PC gaming, is just being able to buy a pre-built box that operates like a console, has a really simple interface, and is meant to be played on a TV. Excuse me. Mm-hmm. And um, now it seems to me like the Xbox is going to become that. Like, I, I kind of see a shift in Microsoft towards PC gaming with the Xbox just being their brand name pre-built that they are putting out. Um, and I would prefer it that way. But I guess the only reason I would prefer it that way 
is because I'm still imagining a world pre-cross-platform multiplayer. Like, cross-platform multiplayer removes this to where you all you really have are console manufacturers and games. Like, there's, I sincerely believe that the only reason there even is this brand loyalty and, like, fan raging against each other is because of the lack of cross-platform multiplayer. Because you find yourself having to defend your decisions to your friends because mm-hmm. you cannot play with them. And you're like, well, I picked it because this. And they're like, oh, you picked it because this. <laughs> like, <laughs> I think once that's gone, that'll all be gone. I really do. <laughs> yeah. Well, Mayo says, you know, why own an Xbox or a PlayStation when you can have a PC? And don't get me wrong, I absolutely get that for Xbox because they're putting most of their stuff on PC now, but there are plenty of reasons to have a PlayStation, in my opinion. There's plenty of good uh, exclusives, more than Bloodborne. And it's kind of hard to talk shit on PlayStation when all you want to play is Bloodborne, when there's so many more that you could play. <laughs> I have mixed feelings because I hate that they're only real, like talking point is exclusives because again that's another huge problem that i have with the console like environment in the first place is exclusivity there's no reason there's no reason that the last of us would only work on a sony product like you know like i i want to see a day when that all that shit goes away but it's not like it's it's a real hippy dippy dick in the air attitude that i have i don't i'm well, you know what I'm saying? Like, what good well, you, does it do you, me saying it? Like, <laughs> not to just defend the consoles because, like, yeah, I'd like to be able to play Mario on anything, you know? But at the same time, it's money. Like, yeah. Like, like all our videos are on YouTube. Why are they on Vimeo, too? Because YouTube's where everything is. Like, yeah. you know, like, it, it's hard to not be like, this should be everywhere when we're not everywhere. You know, it's, it's a weird comparison, I know, but it's it's in the same vein. Like money always talks. Yeah. Well, how do we want to close out talking about the Microsoft conference? Uh, let's let's grade it. Let's let's give it a, a number like something out of ten. One out of ten. What what do you give the overall conference? Um. Uh... I'm going to give it an eight, uh, and I will say that saying that Microsoft for me is normally only getting in seven. I, I was pleased with this conference, but I was still just kind of like, you didn't wow me. I don't feel wowed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it being the E3 that it was right before the new consoles, I'm, I'm going to give it a little bit of sympathy there. But uh, I, I'm going to give them like a seven, seven out of ten. Like, you know, it was a solid C. Okay. Uh it, it it was it was okay. They they had some good they 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 got to show some good stuff, but not everything they showed I will even be playing on their system. I mean, right. Elden Ring, PC, to, or not PC. Elden Ring, Halo, Tales of Arise. If any of that or if all of that's on PC, that's, that's where, where we'll playing. be playing it. Yeah. Yeah. Like thanks for showing it to me. Uh, good luck with your console. Exactly. <laughs> like, uh, you know, I mean, there's always going to be people who who just only play console, and that's fine. That, that doesn't matter. Like, you're, it's not like you're uh, not a gamer if you're not playing on PC. Now, the mobile folk, they fuck off. But <laughs> God, they can fuck off. But uh, yeah, I, I'm gonna give it. A, I'm gonna give it a seven. Uh, let's let's just move on to the next one, which is Bethesda. Okay. Bethesda... Uh, not a lot to talk about here. To be real. Let's just talk about um, their approach to their controversy. That's really what I want to talk about. All right. Go for Uh, it. Okay. So they did to me what I think the only good right move would have been for them. Okay. Let me let me backpedal. If you didn't see it, um, they opened with this sappy ass like, you know, Bethesda only exists because of you guys. And you guys have spoken. You've given us criticism. And we've, you know, we've deserved that criticism. And we've listened. And all this stuff. I guess I would have liked it a little bit better if what's his name again? I don't remember. Uh, Todd Howard. I wish Todd Howard come to, just walked straight out on stage and was just like, "All right, we fucked up." <laughs> like, I, like, he, like he kind of joked about it. Yeah, like, but at the same time, that's not an apology. Yeah, buddy. exactly. You lied you through your teeth. Yeah, like that's the thing is that the whole thing winds up feeling fake. 
because it's not a real apology and i feel like a lot of game developers don't feel like they owe apologies like they probably feel like what they did was the the most sincere thing they could do and i am thankful for it i am thankful for a lot of the ways that they went about it um but you know i i think that the the way the only way it could have been better would have been almost cartoonish like i was i was sitting here going man he needs to just put up one of those youtube videos where they're just breaking down all of the bugs <laughs> And just being like, yeah, we fucked up. <laughs> like, uh, because I, I don't really know what it would have won him back for me. I think, I think all of this is part of why I've just got a sour taste in my mouth. Like, literally, the only thing I even really wanted to see out of this conference was Doom. Yeah, I know, right? And uh, I'm weirdly a little curious whether or not I'm going to enjoy this Doom as much as the first one. And I have no fair reason why. Like, I think that last one really straddled the line between old school arcadey gameplay and really intense theatrical presence. And this one looks a little bit more gamey in the way that it presents itself with its colorful, like, HUD and its power ups. And there's a part of me that's just like, eh, it's a little too gamey Doom. And there's another part of me that's like, shut up, Jesse. <laughs> like, so I don't really know how to feel about it, but I am still excited for it. Yeah. Um let's uh let's talk about uh about how everybody in their audience was probably a Bethesda employee or at the very least paid to clap. <laughs> I watched this conference with uh Lady Lazarus and she was starting to get fucking pissed <laughs> because Dude, she was, they would clap for anything. She was just like, Stop interrupting, like you don't even have any goddamn manners. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> like but yeah, like you, you could tell there were several moments whenever like somebody was just proud of something and they were just trying to talk about it. And the guy kept being like, Woo! just in the middle of him talking and just being mm -hmm. like, yeah, there's no way you're not getting paid because like. And you, you see it like you see it for yourself. We're not trying to be weird ass fucking like conspiracy theorists about it. It's people like wearing the fucking branded shirt in droves in the front. Like, they have to do that to counterbalance, like, the the booze from the Blizzard conferences of the world, you know? Like, yeah. Like, it's like insurance almost. We've got to pay some people whose job it is to clap, or else there will be just awkward silence. Mm hmm. Um, so, I've been uh, kind of trying to help my nephew for the last past, like, five minutes. Uh, he's got kind of a major problem, so I've been typing to him back and forth. Do you need to talk to him for a second? Well, I just, I've I've kind of only half paid attention. Have we actually talked about Doom yet, or just mentioned it? We talked about it, but I, it was really just me talking about it. Okay. What do you want to say about Doom? Maybe I can stitch it back in there. Uh, nothing that you probably didn't say. Don't worry about it. Like, I'm, I'm hop as hell for Doom. Like, like I'm... <laughs> I think that's all they've got going for them right now, to be real. Okay. Uh, Ghostwire Tokyo looks pretty cool. It looks spooky. <laughs> it looks spooky. <laughs> uh, she um, was cute as shit. She really was. Uh, what about this Orion tech they talked about? That was pretty cool. Yeah. I, I think you're going to need something like this to make streaming games work. Like, because... You know, take for example, um, the Google Stadia thing, and they're like, "Yeah, it's this like whole like streaming game like system." Um, it's just like, how is that gonna look good and not have input delay? Like, how's that even gonna work? And whenever they were just like, "Yeah, this technology makes it to where the uh, input delay is not even perceptible," I'm just like, "All right, I'm listening," because. <laughs> um, you know, if it if it works, then yeah, I will gladly play like console or PC quality games on my phone. Sign me up. <laughs> like, yeah, um, something something that bothers me about this. This is kind of does nothing to do with Bethesda, but talking about about this tech and streaming games with them going through the Stadia thing. You know, they're just like, oh man, you can play all these games. You don't even need hardware. I'm just going to stream it to you for you know just pay us pay us the the monthly fee play whatever fuck you want you don't you don't even need a powerful pc we, we got you on this end and it's just like my guy have you heard of data caps because uh they exist and uh they exist purely to fuck you up <laughs> like 
Like it's it's going to be bad uh, and, unless unless they can get Google Fiber everywhere in the you know United States or world for that matter, hmm. and then be like and go through their own um, internet provider like through Google themselves and they like wave the cap or something, then most places are absolutely not going to benefit from this kind of thing. Yeah, like me and me and you, we absolutely couldn't do it. Exactly, because Comcast would just flip us off and be like, "Good luck." Yep. Well, it's a flashback to whenever they announced the Xbox One, and it was originally going to be a purely streaming console. If it had been, it would have been a total fucking failure because we weren't there in terms of like nationwide internet access that they needed for it to work. And even now, so many years later, we're still not much better. Yeah. Yeah, it's... I don't know. I I think they're on the right track. Uh... They'll probably move faster than VR is, to be real. But uh, I think it'll be a little while before we see that come to, you know, be be really good and, like, viable. Right. But uh, that's, all, that's all I really know to say about Bethesda. Like, okay. Let's move on. They, they, they thought they were going to say a Fallout 76 with a free update and a battle royale. But, like... <laughs> I still do not understand why they thought that anybody would be excited about it. And it showed their hand. It definitely like made it way too obvious that they just had like employed clappers because who in 2019 would be pumped for that. It's almost a meme at this point, how much people hate battle Royales. Now, now don't get me wrong. A battle Royale suits the wasteland. Yeah, pretty well, and the that, that's that's burning, gonna make the, go ahead. The, the burning forest thing like that. That's cool. That works. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's cooler than just a generic storm mm-hmm. that like every other VR has. But I think it's gonna make Fallout seventy six feel more like a Fallout game, if that makes any sense. Like the, the, you're gonna be out there now. It's not gonna be like you're free roaming and somebody's gonna kill you. But like. You know, there's a shitload of people out there trying to kill you in this VR in the Fallout universe. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. I don't want to play it, but that makes sense at least least a little bit. Right. But as as far in real real quick before we get off of Bethesda, the moment I knew that that everybody in that audience was paid or either worked for them is when they announced Commander Keen and everybody lost their shit. (laughs) Who who the absolute fuck? is out there just like god there needs to be a commander keen mmo <laughs> yep all right do you want to talk about devolver because i didn't watch that one I, I didn't either but let's let's rate bethesda before we move on oh i forgot okay all right rating bethesda uh yeah, I'm going to give it a out of 10. <laughs> like, yeah. holy shit, dude. I don't even know what number to give it. It's let me. OK, let me just look at it real quick and see if there's a, four. <laughs> yeah, I think that's, that's being what generous. I, that's what I was going to say. I think they get a fat four because all they really had was doom. And then that Ghostwire game looks pretty cool. And that's it. <laughs> like, yeah. that is absolutely it. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like, okay, like, you know how sometimes people will grade these like a letter grade? I'm just kind of imagining last year's got like an A, and then like a week later, we realized that they plagiarized their paper. (laughs) Like, you know what I'm saying? So it's just like, I'm just sitting here going, I'm not giving you anything higher than a fucking four for this. I don't feel bad for you. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, they did. All they'd had to do, too, if they had closed out their conference with just surely they've got a little bit of gameplay for Elder Scrolls six at this point, e- even if it's nothing crazy, they could just be like, hey, here's something. Yeah, hey, we, we may owe it to you at this point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then I, I think that would have saved them a little bit better. And now it wasn't, hey, don't you guys have phones bad? But it's pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. But uh, all right, let's move on. Do um, you want to talk about Devolver or just skip it? Uh, I didn't watch it, so I don't even know what they did. Like, I legit don't know anything right. they announced. PC gaming show? Uh, I didn't watch it either, but I heard it was a trash fire. So if you <laughs> want to talk about it, you can. I didn't watch it. I don't want to. I don't want to talk about it. Okay. Uh, I didn't watch Ubisoft. Uh, I didn't either. Fun. 
Uh, I, I, w- I didn't really watch Square, but I feel like you did. I watched all of Square, so I will talk about Square. Okay, you lead the way. Okay, so obviously the first and biggest thing I want to talk about with Square is Final Fantasy VII Remake finally has a release date. Holy shit, hallelujah. <laughs> Next year, March, right before my birthday, this game finally is coming out. Part one, anyway. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, I'm afraid we're never going to see the rest of that game. Like, this one's going to sell like fucking hotcakes, man. But then it's when people realize that it's all going to be in Midgar and that you're not leaving Midgar and that they're going to stretch out Midgar to where it's just as paper thin as it can be. And then we got to wait two more years, probably at least, for part mm-hmm. two. No, sir. No, no. Yeah. It's going to get canceled halfway through. I, I just feel it in my bones. This is something that I've already said to, I think, two people by now. But I, I can understand why it's happening. Um, because, you know, games like Final Fantasy VII were made great based on their constraints. Because, mm-hmm. you know, the technology wasn't there. So it's an enormous game. But really, how enormous is it when you consider it? Like... There's a lot of content, but it's all worlds that are just, like, on painted, pixelated backgrounds. So, like, translating that to today's 3D, yeah, of course, that's going to be an enormous task. And so I can't necessarily say with any confidence that there was a better way to do it. But it's an unfortunate circumstance, because what the fuck? (laughs) Like, I don't know that I would buy that. I don't know that I'm interested in buying that. And I feel like if I if I tell myself I'm waiting for like in a collected edition of it, it's gonna be like ten years from now from the it looks really will. of things. Yeah, it'll it'll be so far away if you want the full thing. Like well, I like I I wouldn't be surprised if it's like the end of life cycle for the PS5. Yeah, but like it's it's a ways away. Um, I'm hyped for for Final Fantasy VII remake. Final Fantasy VII is one of my favorite RPGs of all time. Um. I'm hella hot for the remake. I hate the way they're doing it. I hope I get to see all of it before I die. <laughs> you know, like I, I hope it all comes out. Um, it, it, it's I don't know. I'm hot for it, and it makes me sad at the same time. That's all I know to say about it. <laughs> God, if that isn't <laughs> a mood, <laughs> like yeah. What else do we um, want to talk about from that conference, though? Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm just going to run over some a few things and just talk about them real fast. Uh, Life right. is Strange 2. I couldn't give a I don't care. shit. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. That, those games look terrible to me. Uh, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles remastered. That might be cool. I, I don't think I ever played Crystal Chronicles, so I ain't got really any attachment to it. Uh, they showed Octopath Traveler for what the fuck ever reason. I thought it had been on PC for like two weeks now, but I guess not. Uh, the Last Remnant remastered. That game's pretty cool, but uh, still not that pumped for it. But uh, World of Dragon Quest Builders 2, I'm actually pretty hot for this one because I had the demo for the first game, and that little game was fun as hell. So I'm probably going to buy this one. And if I can play it with fans, if anybody's interested in it, I'd be happy to, because I'm pretty sure it's going to come to Steam. Yeah, World well, uh, of Dragon Quest Builders. Fine. Builders 1, I played a little bit of, and I was just like, you know what, I'm just going to wait until 2 comes out, because this this seems like something I might enjoy, but I, I do know there's a sequel in the works. Yeah, it looks it looks pretty cool, so I would like to try that. Um, they talked about Dragon Quest Eleven Switch version. Don't care. Mm. Um I don't even remember what Circuit Superstars is or Battalion 1944 is. So skipping those. Uh, they did show a new trailer for Shadow for Shadowbringers, which is the new Final Fantasy XIV uh, expansion that comes out here in uh, two weeks, I think. Uh, it looks dope. Like that that expansion looks amazing. But so did Stormblood, and Stormblood was absolute garbage. I don't know if anybody listening to this has played 14. Uh, if you like Stormblood, tell me why in the comments, but I hated it. I really did. Like, it made it look like you were always going to be in the Japanese type place, and for the most part of it, you're in the desert helping refugees. And that's not what I signed up for. Like, I wanted to be a samurai. I don't know. Game yeah. game was bad. Uh, we've already kind of talked about Dying Light 2. Uh, a lot of people are pumped for the Romancing the Saga. Um, uh, like I guess series finally coming over here because I guess it never had before I don't really know yeah, um, I don't know either I don't remember Outriders or Oninaki that much uh, the Final Fantasy 8 remaster 
coming out, I, I might actually get it. Because, like, one of my bucket list things is to beat all the Final Fantasy games. I do not like 8, but I'm, I've am i got to beat it if I want to do that. And this seems like the, my best shot. Uh, it looks really good compared to the other one. It's not a full remake like Final Fantasy 7, but uh, it looks hella better. So I'm going to hold off and buy that one instead of the one that's on Steam now. And How do you Final feel about Fantasy- Marble's Revengers? <laughs> That's what I was supposed to say. Let's let's talk about this uh, little dumpster fire they got going on. <laughs> Just, uh, it doesn't look good to me at all. It looks okay. I think that Marvel Avengers. This I'm gonna move my mic a little bit, and I'm gonna start my sentence over so I don't lose all that. I think that this Square Enix Marvel Avengers game is very interestingly the perfect little symbol for how I feel about the entire E3 in the sense that I feel like the industry has figured out how to make a game look good without having any substance to it at all, because it technically I should be excited as the Avengers. It's a very high production value game. Um, the, the, they're keeping the, the tone the way it is in the movies. Like you can tell us the same kind of interactions between characters but still, in spite of all of that, does this not look like the most generic set piece shit? It looks like a fake video game for a movie. You know, whenever they're playing a video game off screen and it's like not even a real game. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. it, like, what is this? Like, there's so much wrong with it in the sense that like a lot of the initial res- reports I was seeing was saying that it was going to be a co-op game. And I was like, yeah, a co-op Avengers game. Like, I could see there being a co-op Avengers game that's more Marvel Ultimate Alliance style that's like arcade and a co-op Avengers game that's like a a real AAA experience. And then they're like, well, you know, the campaign's not co-op. I was like, oh, okay. Why do I care? Because it only looks like you're delivering to me the level of quality product I would get out of something oriented around multiplayer. And there's these reports about, like, it really looking staged. Like, the video not really representing gameplay as much as it's just a series of animations strung together as a presentation, but not really gameplay. And and so, and then, like, you know, lots of people were like, hey, you know, this looks generic. It, you didn't get the actor licenses for it to look like the actors. It's, you know, the, some of the voice acting sounds generic. I know that the, the guy voicing Thor is a big name voice actor. I've forgotten his name and Ian would kill me for this, but. Um, oh, it's, um, shit. Uh, he's married to Laura Bailey. That's that. Cause she's Travis Bailey, Travis Baker, Travis Baker. Okay. All right. I thought they were married. Maybe they're not. I don't know. Yeah. She might have kept her last name. I, I swear they're married. I swear they have a kid. Anyway. Regardless, you know, yes, he's a good voice actor, but so much of it sounds, again, generic. I couldn't give a shit. <laughs> I, I, I really, I really couldn't. I'm more interested in Ultimate Alliance. And over the years, I've gotten very burnt out on arcade style games like that. But I am. I'm more interested in that game. Yeah. Um, the moment and now this was this wasn't until after E3, but when I decided that that game is probably going to be bad, is a lot of people had had gotten feedback to the developers talking about how bad the the models looked and how bad the hair looked on the characters and how Black Widow looks like a dude, and they were they were all just like, "Well, that's great and all, but we're not changing the game models. Get over it." And I was just like, "This is doomed to fail." Yep. <laughs> like at that moment, I was just like, if they're not going to listen to who is going to be their customers, then they're fucked. Like, yeah. this, this is not going to go well. Yep, it's a damn shame, too. Well, yeah. and then they showed like no gameplay. Like, they showed kind of some gameplay when the Hulk was on there, kind of jumping over that bridge a little bit. Right. But uh, there was no like, you know, HUDs or anything. So, like, you couldn't tell if it was gameplay. It could have been a cutscene, but it, it looked kind of like gameplay to me. But uh, that's all we really seen, you know. Nothing else was great. So, anyway, rate this bitch. Wait. Yeah, uh, I'm. I'm actually going to give them. I'm. I'm going to time with Microsoft because uh, I'm. I'm not necessarily just super fanboy for Square because they fuck up a lot of stuff. To, to like I did, I'm not a big fan of Kingdom Hearts three. I think they fucking ruined Kingdom Hearts three for the most part. But uh. Uh, I'm going to give them a seven. I, I think they're right there with Microsoft. I had fun watching their conference and a lot of their stuff interests me. So 
I'm maybe a tiny bit biased. Uh, yeah, I'm going to give him a six, but that's also my bias showing. It's, it's just like... Uh, it, I, it, my score, if it had a sound, it would be this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can, I can appreciate the effort you've put into this work, but, like, I don't care. So you, you can have my, my pity clap at the soccer game, but I don't really have much else to give you. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, that's, that's all I really have to say about it. Um, seven, tied with Microsoft for best conference. Nintendo. Nintendo. Yeah, let's, move, let's move on to Nintendo. Okay, so the first thing they came out swinging with was some Smash Bros. DLC immediately. Uh, that was hella nice. Uh, I don't mind the heroes from Dragon Quest, but I also don't give a shit. I do mind them not using his name. And a lot of people have been like, well, Gatsby, it's going to be a character that looks different depending on the skin. Yeah, they weren't all called the hero. And there are already other characters in the game that have different names depending on which one you you pick. So, like, why not just go ahead and confirm from us that this character is called the Luminary? I, I, yeah. I just don't understand the justification behind it because, like, okay, if you're going to have a generic title for this character, that's great. But why is it going to be a title so goddamn generic that it could describe literally every character in the fucking game? Like, it's, it's a stretch to me. It really is. I don't have a problem with the character being in the game. Matter of fact, I'm excited for it. They seem to have kept the art style really well. It looks good, but... Yeah, the the only thing that really bothers me about him is, and I don't even know why they wanted to show Link be in his reveal trailer, but he looks like he plays just like Link. Yeah, like he he's almost just another Link, and it that kind of sucks. Like I don't know, may, maybe he plays different, like uh, in a further broken down trailer or something. But uh, he he looks like a Link, and I don't like it. Yeah, like. I have already heard the criticism that there are too many sword fighters in Smash, and here we are. Thor, yeah. Jim Jim puts it in words. A sword fighter pile to the right. Yeah, I I I love most of the Fire Emblem characters, but at least half or more need to go, <laughs> like yeah. big time. Anyway, uh, let's move on to the next one. We've already talked about Dragon Quest Eleven being on the Switch. I'm happy for Switch owners. I couldn't care less. I know um, I asked you during the conference, are you going to play Luigi's Mansion 3 with me? And you were like, no. And I was like, okay. <laughs> like, I didn't really have high expectations for it. It's something that I probably would have played if you had been interested. But since you weren't, I was like, ah, I'm probably not going to do that then. Yeah. Uh, uh, I've not played any of the other uh, um, Luigi's Mansions. Uh, my ex fiance used to play the one on 3DS. But uh, that's really, and her dad really liked them. But that's all I really know about them. Um, uh, yeah, I know a lot of people love them, so like I'm happy for those people, but I just don't care about them. So right. I'm like, you know, I don't hate it, but I'm not, I'm not looking forward to it. Well, how about Jim Henson's The Dark Crystal Age of Resistance Tactics? That game looks terrible, <laughs> absolutely terrible. Looks like a phone game. <laughs> I just remember I was sitting there going, What the fuck? <laughs> like. Mayo says it is a phone game. Oh, well, that explains a few things. It looks exactly like a segue to a different topic. <laughs> Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening remake. If I hadn't played this game, I would definitely be playing this remake, but I've played it and I don't have much interest in replaying it like this. Yeah, basically um, what he said. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I don't, don't like wrong. the art style uh, You see, all. he doesn't like the art style. I do. I think it's cute as shit, and I think it's really suitable for that game. But as a consequence of not having played or as a consequence of having already played it I, yeah, I, you know like I, for me zelda games are kind of a slog and that's that's a a, a heret a heretic's opinion but you know <laughs> i i how do i phrase this um i never finished watching the godfather even though it's like an iconic film i just turned it off like two-thirds of the way in and most zelda games feel that way to me <laughs> like they're just like critically acclaimed games that i don't enjoy all the way through and so it kind of becomes a chore um and link's awakening was slightly more enjoyable than i expected but it was still a chore so i i don't plan on taking that task again um, but it looks cute. Moving on here, Trials of Mana. I'm I'm kind of hot for. Yeah. Uh, I think it I think it looks pretty cool. Uh, it's a remake of an old Mana game, um, which is a series. In case anyone here didn't know that, um, mm -hmm. 
uh, I, I'm, I'm pretty hyped for that one. I really want to play it. And then the collection of mana that's also coming out, I, th- I think that's going to be cool too. So uh, those two I'm looking forward to. Hey, kid, you like The Witcher 3? You ever wanted to play it through a dirty window? (laughs) (laughs) I don't know what they were thinking. Like, it's going to look like ass. It's going to run like ass. It's, oh, my God. Like, ultimately, there are people out there. There are people out there that haven't played it, that have a Switch, that would play it if it's on Switch. But, like, like, let me... I, I can understand it if I put myself in the mindset of a child, right? Because, you know, when you're a kid, your console loyalty comes from what your parents get you, right? So if you're a kid and you only have a Switch, oh, have you played The Witcher? No, I've only got a Switch. <laughs> you know, like, but if you're an adult that can make their own financial decisions, if you wanted to play The Witcher 3, you would have fucking played it by now. Yeah. You know, well, like, you're you're not itching to play it half as good looking. Like, you're not waiting for that to happen. Yeah, like I'm, I'm tired of every of every major Switch owner's uh ex- excuse being like, oh well, it's portable now. And I'm just like, please, The Witcher Three is portable on a good laptop. It has been the whole time. Yeah. And it's just like, like I get it. Some people may travel a lot. Maybe they're on a train to to and from work for hours of a day. Maybe they are. That's a good place for a switch. I'm happy for you. But if you're not traveling a ton and your your excuse is, well, I can play it on my porch, man, I can I can sit on my porch and still play my TV because I can see it through the window <laughs> and it's not dirty. <laughs> it's not dirty. <laughs> No, um, I am one of those people that typically responds, well, now it's portable, but this game is not made better by being portable. It's a long form RPG. Like, I personally don't like, okay, l- let me backpedal. I know there are a lot of quote unquote long form RPGs that many of us played on like Game Boy to begin with, but I, I think there's an excuse to be made that those games can still be played in bite sized manner. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I'll I'll fucking admit it. Maybe I'm wrong. I just don't think this game is made better by being portable. Yeah, I'm I'm just I'm just sick of years old games getting ported to Switch and people being like it's it's the like, the next the newest best thing and it's just like man everybody played this when it came out who the fuck cares that it's on the Switch if I wanted to play it on a tiny ass little screen I would emulate it on on my MacBook. Mayo in chat says, let's be real here. Dark Souls Remastered sucked the biggest anus. <laughs> and having The Witcher 3 for Switch would not do it justice. I, I, I just agree. don't see why it keeps getting ports of stuff, especially like Resident Evil 5 and 6. Like, who wants that portable? Who? You talk about Fire Emblem Three Houses. I didn't even really pay it any attention. <sighs> I've I only really talked to Ian a lot about it yesterday. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just recently jumped on the Fire Emblem uh, bandwagon with uh, Fire Emblem Fates. And by recently, I mean a few years ago when it came out. Uh, I played through Conquest and Birthright. I really liked it. Um, It had problems, but I I overall enjoyed it. Uh, Fire Emblem Three Houses seems to be fixing some of those things. Like in this one, they're doing away with the the weapon triangle, what I understand. So like, and if you don't know what that is, it's like... um, Lance beats beats sword, swords beats axes, and I think axes beat lances or pole arms. I think that's how it is. If it's not, you get the general idea. Uh, they're doing away with that, and they're doing away with child units. Which, if you didn't know, uh, in both Awakening and Fates, you could pair people up, and once their relationship reached a certain point, you could marry them, and they would have a child. And the child units were busted as fuck. Like, they were always super powerful. So once you had the child units, you didn't need the parents anymore. And they basically took over the game. So they're doing away with the child units, too. There are no child units in this game. I think you can probably still ship and marry people, but they will not have the child units. Which I think is great because, like I said, they made everything else obsolete. You never used anything else because they were so fucking powerful. And Mayo, to answer your question, he says, how fast do these children grow into war for? Um, There was like a pocket dimension type thing where they put them while they were in war. That way they could, you know, be protected. And uh, they grew up there and they grew up like, like way fast. Think of it as like the hyperbolic time chamber in, uh, in uh, Dragon Ball. Ball. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they, they kind of did a good, like that sounds stupid and it is. But they did a good job uh, explaining it, too, because, like, most all the children were mad at their parents for that because they're just like, I don't even know you. Like, yeah. I grew up here without you. 
and you know to them it was real time but to the parents it was like a couple of weeks or months whatever but yeah they, they did a good job explaining it but it was still fucking stupid but uh anyway i'm hot for fire emblem but we can move on mm, well i don't have okay let me just be clear and transparent about this um if you <sighs> If you haven't played Resident Evil 5 and Resident Evil 6, I can't exactly recommend these games. <laughs> like, uh, if, if, uh, if you've got a co-op buddy and you haven't played them yet, you need to play them. But, you need to play 5. <sighs> 5, I like 5. I, I thought 5 was good. Five, 5 is still goofy enough and still Resident Evil enough that it's, oh, it's, right. walking, it's walking that yeah. fine line. Yeah. Six, however, is like a fucking I don't know, like, like it's like it's like a movie that The Rock would be in. Like it's all action. There's nothing Resident Evil about it besides the monsters. Yeah. I want to ask you a question, and I don't want to sound stupid, but it's a question that I need to ask. Um, okay. Do you give a shit about Damon X Machina? Uh, yes. Fuck. In a way. I don't like. I've just been sitting here watching this, going, "Is this Nintendo's ace in the hole?" Because it doesn't look. Interesting. Well, <laughs> here's the thing. There's been a demo of it for a while now. I thought you had played it, but I guess Mm-mm. not. Uh, yeah, there's been a demo of it for like six months or longer now. And uh, I played it, and the controls are goddamn awful. Like, with, with the Joy-Cons anyway. But uh, I haven't tried it with a Pro Controller because I didn't have one at the time. So it may be better with that. Uh, mm-hmm. The game seems kind of neat. Like, if it's got better controls, I will definitely give it a shot. Okay. But uh, it's it's not, like, way up on my list or nothing. It's kind of something I might grab on a sale. But uh, it, it's kind of cool. Because I'm, I'm in a mech mood right now. I don't oh, know okay. why. I don't, I don't know really what's gotten me there. But, like, I either want a good mech anime or, like, a mech game to play. And, or uh, just a I, mech to climb into. Yeah, just to destroy this world. Mm-hmm. Pans- um, Panzer Dragoon. Panzer Dragoon looks pretty cool. I know, I know there's going to be a lot of people hyped for that because that was back on Sega Saturn or something yeah, like that. That's correct. And yeah. may- maybe the Dreamcast. There was there, I think there was one on Dreamcast. I don't know, but uh, it's kind of an on rail shooter from what I can tell. Uh, I've not played one, uh, but I would definitely try this one. Tell me about Astral Chain. Astral Chain looks awesome. Uh, I think it's actually made by Platinum. You, yeah. you, you know more about it than I do. Like with, It was the first time I'd ever seen anything of it, and I was just like, shit, what is this? Yeah. Astral Chain looks cool. It's made by Platinum Games, which uh, they kind of make the same game over and over, but not in a bad way. They, they usually make beat-em-ups like crazy-ass shit like Bayonetta or God of War type games. They didn't make those. That's just an example. Uh, this one looks kind of like that. It's like a devil may cry looking game, but in this one you can like capture the demons and that like, they like work for you and that they're, they're literally chained to you. Uh, That's, I guess that's the astral chain part of it. Um, that's really all I know about it, but like just watching the gameplay, it looks hella fun because I love games like DMC and God of war and stuff like that. So I'm pumped for that one. Uh, what about shooting empty room simulator? (laughs) That, that game looked bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about Empire of Sin. It yeah. Was, there was a, a song playing in the background that was like Empire of Sin. And it was just gangsters shooting empty rooms from a top down perspective. <laughs> we we <laughs> we talked a little bit about Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 earlier. Um I do worry it's gonna be too arcadey for me. Um, but I I honestly think I will enjoy it more than this other Marvel title. Um, especially because the other one, it's just like, yeah, there's only going to be like these seven base characters and there'll be more added later and it's not multiplayer. And then Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 is just like, you can play as Miles Morales and fucking Ms. Marvel and, and all these crazy characters that are super colorful and you can play as all of them. It's just like, yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Thanks a bunch. <laughs> that's, that's what I would rather, <laughs> what I would rather I, I'll tell you have. what I'm worried about for it. Um, they went ahead and announced that there's going to be a season pass for it. So like... Probably all your favorite characters you're gonna have to buy. Maybe, yeah, I mean, maybe. So that that's potential suckage, but yeah. uh, it looks like the base roster of it's pretty good, unless unless some of the stuff they've shown us is DLC and they didn't say so. But just, uh, it looks like it looks like the base roster is gonna be pretty good. I just remember playing Marvel Ultimate Alliance two with you, and the only character that had healing powers in this multiplayer game was Iron Fist. And you being like, damn, Iron Fist is cool. Flash forward a couple years later when they finally make a TV show about Iron Fist. And it's just like, this is fucking lame. Yeah. (laughs) My name is Danny Rand. (laughs) Okay. 
I feel like I remember you saying you didn't particularly care about this Crypt of the Necrogancer game, but am I wrong? Uh, it's not a game I think I would play, but this one looks visually awesome. And the music's like, bumping. Like, well, let, let me tell you about the music real quick. Um, I don't know if you follow this guy, but his name's Family Jewels, and he's on YouTube. He was actually at Momocon. I wanted to meet him, but I didn't get a chance to. Okay. Uh, he, he does covers of he does metal covers of like all sorts of shit. Like Family Jewels is amazing. He did all the music for Cadence of Hyrule. Oh fuck yes! <laughs> yeah, he he finally they, uh, the other day I seen him post about it. He like tweeted or something, and he was just like, I can finally talk about this because the game's out or it's about to come out or whatever. He's just like, I had the privilege of doing all the music for this game. Hell yeah! And I was just like, damn, that's awesome for him because like he has worked his ass off, and I love his channel. <laughs> Yeah, it looks good. I nearly went ahead and bought it the other day, but I've I've expunged my personal gaming budget for the month. Um, but I am I am interested in playing this game. Um, I like yeah. that you've got multiple characters that you can choose from because like I would enjoy a game where I can play as Zelda. I I think that we we need to be able to play as Zelda in in an actual like RPG style adventure. And I know this isn't a mainline game, but I think that I would enjoy that. Um, yeah. Well, just think about how happy that indie dev's got to be. Oh, of course. Like, like they, got, they got picked. Not only did they get picked up by Nintendo, but they were like, hey, here's our probably second most beloved series. Will you work on it? <laughs> like, Can you imagine? Yeah. I don't remember who it was exactly, but I've only heard of that happening like one other time where a guy was like, yeah, I didn't know I was working on a Mario game until I was in the studio. <laughs> Like, yeah, I think that was the rabbits, dude. Yeah, that was the rabbits, dude. Yeah, I would like to say for a fact that Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games isn't coming out again. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. is there a way that I can do that? <laughs> yeah, like, Google, how do you delete another person's <laughs> game? <laughs> I've just realized, like, every E3, like, recap we ever have is just e us just being like, sucks, sucks, who cares? Now this, I like. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, that's not how E3 goes, though. Yeah. I am very excited to finally see some gameplay of this new Animal Crossing. Me too. Um, I have not played an Animal Crossing since whichever one you finally convinced me to buy on the original DS. And the one that I played on 3DS, I was very unimpressed by, but I think it's because I didn't have anybody to play with. And, you know, now that I'm living with my fiance and we both share this Nintendo Switch, like I could see us playing an Animal Crossing game the way the originals were meant to be played, where you're both occupying similar spaces and interacting with e each other's creations and interacting with each other's uh, communities. Because the way that it seems to be set up is that I think you will still get your own town, but it will all be on the same island if you're on one. Uh, uh, Twitch, and uh, I'm excited to see where this goes. I told my fiance in the in the moment, you know, one of the games recently, I think it was the DS one, puts you as the uh, the mayor of your own city. Maybe that was the 3DS one. I but, think it was. Okay, it was the 3DS one. So I was wondering where they were going to go from there. Whether you would still be in charge of the city or not, and with you actually building the city from the ground up, I was like, this is a really great way to make this work in an escalated fashion. I'm pretty excited for that. Yeah, um, like I said, I haven't played one since the DS one. Because Animal Crossing was definitely one of those games that when I just took a glance at it, I was like, that's gay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then Jesse got me. He was just like, just fucking try it. Just fucking right? try it, dude. <laughs> and so I, you know, I tried it. And and I was just like, okay, I'll I'll buy it and give it a shot. But then I had I had him. Uh, my girlfriend at the time, his my girlfriend, girlfriend at, the time, at the time, and him, my cousin, and his cousin. So we had like five people to play with and visit each other's towns and stuff, and that made it fun. That made it really legitimately fun. So I had a blast playing that game. I hope this one's similar because it'd be cool to visit like our our fans' towns and stuff, trade mm. with them. Like that'd be pretty dope. So I'm looking forward to that one too. I'm gonna hand the final Smash character announcement over to you. I feel like this is more your baby. Oh yeah. So. <laughs> So when it started, when it showed DK sitting there, like yawning, sleeping, I was just like, okay, this is this 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 isn't a Donkey Kong game. This is exactly how one of the other announcements started. This is definitely Smash. And then you know they're sitting there sleeping. K rules in there sleeping with them, and that then then you definitely knew this is probably Smash. And then the jiggy bounces by the screen really fast. It's like ding ding ding, and it's done. And I was just like. They done fucked around <laughs> and put Banjo in Smash, and then they kept going. They showed they showed the, the silhouette, and it all faded away to be that stupid ass bird and duck. 
And everybody was like, fuck, what are they doing? But then, you know, in the back of my head, I was like, there's no way they would have showed that Jiggy just to set this up to fake us out. And then Banjo comes and then, down. And then nothing. And just, like <laughs> Banjo comes down and just murders that bitch. Just, I mean, across the head. That dog's dead, guys. <laughs> that dog is gone. Like, pray for his family. Banjo and has then, taken his character slot. He is no longer available. <laughs> nothing would make me happier. But, uh. Banjo shows up and it's just like, fuck, I can't imagine the crowd. It, it, I guess there's not a crowd, but you know, I can't imagine the like reactions across the world at the time. It's just like, holy fuck. They, they found a way to do it. <laughs> like this yeah. is amazing. <laughs> Cause everyone, everyone's wanted Banjo in for fucking ever, man. That's like, been like my he, top character I've wanted. He in the game. fits so perfect. Yeah. He should have been in a long time ago, yeah, but I agree. Yeah, and I, I'm, it I'm makes, super happy. It makes me wonder if this is going going to pave the way for more banjo games or not like i honestly thought that would have been the next announcement that was like by the way we can't show a trailer or anything but we're working on banjo 3 like that that's what i was really hoping for i feel like this is we're currently in the right climate for that because people are being like yeah take my money take i'll give give me ghostbusters 4 <laughs> like you know what i'm saying like people are are buying into that shit right now yeah but, Dude, I would even settle for a banjo one or two. Well, I think they wouldn't do two before one, but maybe both, whatever. You can but play I, banjo Kazooie one on Xbox. I know oh, that. I know. I have it. Yeah, yeah I've, I've got the rare collection on my Xbox. But what I was going to say is I would settle for a remaster, like a full remaster or even a full remake if, mm -hmm. if Xbox would just do it. Yeah. You know, just, just tell rare, hey, we need this and just get them to do it like I, I would gladly play that and i think i think their new partnership with nintendo they would let them put it on switch as well where it belongs to be real so you're not terribly excited for this uh breath of the wild sequel uh no not even in the slightest bit uh i thought breath of the wild i'm probably going to catch some heat for this in the comments on the video maybe i don't know the community pretty much knows my thoughts on breath of the wild i think but i'll go ahead and repeat them uh, Breath of the Wild was a massive letdown to me. Uh, I know it's like the hottest, newest shit since Ocarina of Time for most people. But uh, first four hours of that game, I was blown away. It was fantastic. I was running around. I accidentally found the Zoras, and he was just like, man, you need to help me. And that led me into the first beast. That was cool as shit. Uh, after that, I was just like, there ain't a damn thing in this world. Well, after that, that you've already experienced everything the game has to offer. Exactly. Like that, that's like, the problem. Yeah, that that is the problem. Like you've climbed you've climbed one mountain, you've climbed fucking every mountain. Like the same things at the top of all of them. Nothing. Maybe a shrine. The shrines were so shit, there had to be a thousand of them or a hundred or whatever there were. Like it was they were so boring. And then the dungeon, the dungeon design was just trash to me. Cause they I spent no more than thirty minutes in each divine beast. Like they they were mind numbingly easy. And like I missed, I missed dungeon items. I know that yeah. kind of makes the game a little more linear. But people will argue that's fine to me. I grew up on Zelda. I'm old. I get it. <laughs> like I, I like the old school style of Zelda. Um, I hate that you start off with all the powers you're gonna get, except for the the divine beast ones that most people don't even use. Um, I hate that you never got anything else added to your little ipad thing like you start out with bombs the the ice and the magnetism like maybe you could have got those as you went but now you just here have everything you need from the start have fun i can't fault nintendo for making breath of the wild i really can't because to me breath of the wild is almost like a tech demo like you're the one that used those words first is that breath of the wild feels like a tech demo for the complete game like it's almost like they they created the whole world created the mechanics and then and then released it like they didn't actually yeah. flesh it out any but to Absolutely. me playing the breath of the wild i was like this game is not quite nailing it for me but it's making me very excited for the next game and mm -hmm. that's why i am excited but i did anticipate it being its own game not a sequel, but at the same time, I'm still pumped for a sequel because to me, I'm like, okay, now you've got to add to this. Like, I've heard people be like, oh, it looks like it's still in the same world. It, bitch, it better not be. That castle better carry my ass somewhere really far away so that I can finally have some variety because it's like, 
it's like you know how in minecraft when you travel through a biome it's like there's there's just sort of a little palette swap on the ground it just goes through a gradient and then all of a sudden you're from greenland into yellowland <laughs> like that's <laughs> yeah. how breath of the wild felt for me it's just like okay is it pastel green or pastel orange <laughs> those are like my options um so uh i i am desperately hoping that it takes what worked from that game and expands upon it yeah I, i'm i'm just afraid that this is going to be the other half of the tech demo and we're still not going to get it all mm. and like you said if that if that castle doesn't take us somewhere cool what in the world and, and unless there's some sort of like time jump time skip like what are they gonna do like everybody the people who super enjoyed that game that like have explored all of that world head to toe mm -hmm. what what's what's they're gonna be new for them well here's like, what i here's what i really think is gonna happen that is upsetting to me um i really think that that castle is gonna go up into the air and it's gonna pull some dark world shit and they're just gonna palette swap the whole world <laughs> And it's, they're not going to even bother designing another, like, world. They're just going to put new shit in it and just call it a new game. You just made me want to refund and I haven't bought it yet. <laughs> I really honestly think that's what they're going to do. Oh. Uh. <laughs> I think that castle's going to go up in the sky, shoot some kind of magic beam down, and it's going to be like that. Before we talk about the the controversy surrounding this game i do want to say i thought i was done with pokemon like i swore i was going to try not to play any more pokemon because i was very let down by sun and moon i sincerely want to play pokemon sword and pokemon shield however <laughs> I, I will going off that just real quick the only reason i'm giving this one a chance is because it's the first one that's on a console yeah, but that's that's it. If 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 Sword and Shield had been on the 3DS again, I would not even look at it. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the Switch isn't that much better than a 3DS, in my opinion. But it's still technically it, the first home console release of a is. legit Pokemon RPG. It, it absolutely is. And like, don't get me wrong, the game looks good. Like, I think the big open worlds of it look good. I'm glad they kept the Pokemon running around from uh, Pokemon Go, but ditched the Pokemon Go bullshit. Yeah. Like, I, I actually really like that. I think that's cool because they'll chase you and stuff. And like, that, I like that. Like, it's it's better than just getting sucked into the grass, you know? Yeah. Well, I'm excited for it. Um, it, In case you live under a rock, the whole world is upset that um there is no national decks in this game which means it will be limited to whatever pokemon they decide to include in this game so not all of the pokemon that have ever been released will be in it uh unpopular opinion i kind of understand <laughs> like i kind of understand why they did that and i i think that even if there's so much fan outcry that they go okay we've decided to include all of them do you legit think that they're gonna keep including all the pokemon like they're eventually not going to be able to well, like, that's that's something that I agree with what you said. Like, I kind of get why they didn't do it, but the excuse they gave oh, yeah. was, was the worst was the worst excuse they could have gave. Because I was reading through a Reddit thread, and this guy had basically torn down Sun and Moon, and he was looking at file sizes and stuff, and he's just like, "Here's how bad of a developer Game Freak is when it comes to doing this stuff." Um, you remember the Lily girl that had Cosmog? Yeah like the tall girl. Yeah. yeah. Well, in instead of her having one model that like travels through each zone, uh, when she's with you, every single zone has a different model of Lily in it instead of just using one, like a normal video game would. So it makes her file size fucking enormous for no reason because they're lazy. What the fuck? <laughs> so, so that's that like what their excuse is probably a legitimate one because they don't know what the fuck they're doing still. Yeah. So, so that's probably why they can't include the, all the Pokemon. They need some help. They need some some you know, God bless his soul, Awada. Like, yeah. They they need something, someone like him to come along and be like, "All right, I got to fix all this." Like, yeah. like you, need, you need to learn how to compress. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, well, something that I found hilarious was somebody actually responded to a, a, a an assumption I've made before. Like, I was just like, "Well, you know." 
all these Pokemon have like models and, and move animations, and that's a lot of fucking work to include all of them. And I finally saw somebody was be like, "You really think they're not including these Pokemon because of animations?" Take a look at this animation of a uh, double kick from Pokemon Stadium, and it was like Pikachu jumping up and doing like a sidekick, and then it showed like Snorlax jumping up and do a sidekick. You know, this the same animation. Like, take a look at double kick in the 3DS game, and it's just Pikachu not even having an animation, and his whole model just doing a little hop, <laughs> like, yeah. and it just went up. It didn't even go towards the enemy. It's yeah. like uh... it's a it's a terrible terrible excuse, but it wouldn't surprise me if it's just due to their incompetence. Yeah. But but what I was going to say real quick, they've already confirmed that going forward, they're not going to be able to include all Pokemon in all games from now on. Like, like they, they, they've flat out said, this is our new um, like roadmap. This is how we're going to do it. So like get used to it. So if, if they don't budge on, on this game, I don't, don't expect to ever see it again. I just, I'm, I'm sitting here going, what's the point supposed to be now? Because like, I thought the point of Pokemon in general is I am building a unique group of my favorites by catching, trading, and saving. Like that was the Mm -hmm. big roadmap that they pushed in the past four years was you're going to get to save them. You're going to get to save them. You're going to get to keep them. You're going to get to transfer them. JK. I I don't care that I can't bring over my old ones. Because you don't really do that. Like I kind of make a dream team and expand on that dream team. You always make sure to have a new team. I either always make sure to have a new team or I, uh, I remake my dream team. Like I don't want to bring over 60 something and just, you know, yeah. plow the game or, or I, I don't want to bring him over at the end game. I could have had him with me the whole time. Just making a new one. Like, like I said it in our discord channel. I was like, this isn't the anime. I don't love these ones and zeros. Yeah. Like <laughs> they're not real animals. I don't care. <laughs> you know, I'm pumped for it, but I, I am already anticipating being angry at myself for having played it, you know? Yeah. Like, because yeah. that's how I felt about Thunder Moon. I was just like, I should not have fucking bothered with this game. <laughs> like I should not have fucking bothered. Super Mario Maker 2. <laughs> Hang on. I've got to find what I was trying to talk about. Oh, I found it. And it was, um, it was redacted. No way. Maybe one. I don't know what the fuck ever, but somebody had pointed out. They're just like, um, they were like, have you noticed that their slogan for a long time? Hasn't been catch them all anymore because they've been slowly moving towards this. Cause you literally wow. can't now. Isn't that just the, the most encapsulating way to really address it? They, the, their very beginning like slogan was got to catch them all and now that's not even the goal yeah Ugh. yeah but yeah that's that's what i was trying to remember saying thank you for whoever said it <laughs> super mario maker <laughs> <laughs> so that comes out in let's see here uh not this friday but next friday i will have that game in my hands because uh, i've already ordered it and i'm looking hella forward to streaming that one Mm-hmm. Same. I'm looking hella forward to to trailing behind you for about three seconds at the beginning of every screen and then die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. I don't know if you guys have ever watched him. Uh. His name's Witwix. He actually doesn't stream that much anymore, and I'll explain that in a minute. But uh, he was like my favorite streamer of all time. He was a big um, I want to be the Boshi speedrunner for a long time. And then he, he kind of quit speed running, speed running when he got popular enough that he could just variety stream. And that's exactly what he did. And uh, he was streaming Mario Maker for like 12 hours a day because he fucking loved it. And he, he was playing those like stupid ass hard levels that was like Boshi because he was good at Boshi. So he was good at 100 man Mario and just destroying these like expert level stuff. And he's, he was a genuinely funny ass dude. And I loved watching his stream. It was my, he was my favorite streamer for a long, long time. And then he fell into like a deep fucking depression and yeah. like he barely ever streams anymore, but sometimes he does. He's still a- active as fuck on Twitter, but like he just can't motivate himself to stream. And like I hate that for him. Uh, when he when he does go live, he still has several thousand people watching him because they they still like him. But like he streams like maybe once a month or something, or maybe it's at hours that I'm just not catching him. But I very rarely ever see him online. But he's the biggest reason I'm looking forward to playing Mario Maker, and I also hope it brings him back. 
Yeah. Because I, I just, man, he's funny as hell. Like, I love Witwick. Well, you know, I could relate. Like, I know people enjoy our content, but a lot of times I can't bring myself to work on it. Today I worked on Divinity for, I think, two hours. And uh, I had to stop because I was just like, bad. For no fucking reason. I was just sad. Like, <laughs> and, like that's just how it is sometimes. Like, there are a lot of times that I'm like, you know what? I really like, I'll give you an example. There have been a lot of times lately that I'm just like, I fucking want to play Doom. I want to play Doom. And I might as well stream it because people would enjoy watching that. But we're going to have technical difficulties the whole time. And then I get sad. <laughs> like, or like, or like, you know what? I want to go back and replay Portal 2. And I want to stream it. But then for some reason, I'm just like, nobody wants to watch that. And I get sad. <laughs> and I don't do it. <laughs> and I, so I can... I'm telling you, you gotta laugh at how fucking stupid it is. <laughs> like, yeah. like... Like, uh, so I can, I can relate. Like, like it, it's, it's not rational when you're experiencing depression. It's not a rational thing. It's just like, it's purely chemical and you've got to recognize that because there are so many times that I would be sad that Chase would ask, well, what are you sad about? And I would try to figure out why I was sad and I'd tell him and he'd be like, well, that doesn't make any sense. And I'd just be like, well, you're fucking right. I don't know why I'm sad. And now I know better because if I try to figure out why I'm sad, I start thinking about sad things and it makes me sadder. Like there wasn't actually a reason. <laughs> it's, like, it's the goddamn truth. Yeah. Like, like I- I'm, I'm almost in the same boat as you minus the sad part like like i'll, I'll be like, <laughs> what boat are you well, in that like <laughs> well I'm, no. i mean I'm, i just meant about wanting to stream something yeah like i'll, I'll be like man i just want to play chrono trigger from the time i get home to when i go to bed and i might as well stream that but then i go no one's gonna watch me grind in the jrpg so like i just wind up playing it on yeah. my laptop just sitting here by myself like it doesn't make me sad or anything when i'm just like you know, even if I streamed it, like two people would be there max. Yeah. You know, yeah. no one wants to see it. Yeah. But I, I might start trying those anyway, just to just to give it a shot. I don't know. Like, I mean, I, I, I trucked all the way through Kingdom Hearts one and fucking nearly nobody watched that even after they said they'd show up. So, yeah, I don't know. I might give Kingdom Hearts two a shot. We'll see. That's kind of how it is, man. Like there, I, I have this made a learn to talk, Jesse. Calm down and pick your words out before you spit them. Um, I've kind of made it a a rule, a personal rule, to not be resentful about any of these things, um, and to just roll with it. But yeah, I mean, that, now, now don't get me wrong. I don't blame our fans. Like, if I'm playing fucking exactly Pokemon and you've just absolutely hate Pokemon, I don't expect you to watch it. I expect you to go watch something else. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, you know, you've you, people have heard me on stream mention multiple times. Well, you know, I set our Patreon goal at 35 because well over 35 people said that they were going to pledge to it. And here we are a year later at 22, you know, but I'm still fucking fucked up thankful for those 22 people. And I don't ever want to sound ungrateful because I'll give you an example. And this is an example you can relate to, I'm sure. I ever, it seems like every time I pick out a new streamer that I can actually stand to watch, I'll tune in sometime and they're just being a fucking hateful dick. And I'm just, and I'm just like, you know, resentment does that to you. Like it, it's, it's, it does that to you. Like you, you, you're just like, you're taking it too personally. You're taking the actions of a mass mob of people too personally, but you can't characterize a whole demographic of people like that. Like you can't, you can't judge your whole fandom based on even what you see a lot, because that's just the people that are the most vocal. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're all like that. And the streamer I'm talking about today is Caleb. Yeah. Because I was watching him today and he was salty. Yeah. <laughs> he, was, he was, I don't know. I don't know if you, I don't know if I was telling you or if I was telling William, but mm-hmm. uh, I think it was you. I think it was, I was talking about Kizron, the guy who streams Pokemon. Mm-hmm. Uh, he likes to do those bingo races and people will come in who don't know anything about the bingo races or speed runs in general and ask him questions. And he will just immediately get heated and just be an absolute asshole to them. Like brand new people in this chat, something that, you know, we couldn't afford to do. Yeah. If we scare away people, then we're fucked. But like, you know, he's, he's not exactly banging huge. Let me see if he's online right now. Yeah, he's streaming right now. He's only been well, he's only been live for eight minutes, but he's already got forty seven viewers. He usually averages like two to three hundred. So uh he's making okay money doing it, but uh 
he can be a real asshole to people when they first come in his stream. And I'm just like, man, that makes me hate you a little bit, but I fucking love watching you. Cause like yeah. these bingo races are fun as shit to watch, but God, you're a dick sometimes. It's like I used to watch man versus game all religiously. He used to be like the only streamer I, I liked. And then I had an interaction with him on Twitter where he was just a absolute ridiculous fuck boy to me. <laughs> and I was just yeah. like, okay, what else, dude? Yeah. It's yeah. just, you. I'm not saying you've got to be nice all the time. I don't think as a human being you can be, but I think, I do think you, you can't make assumptions based. You can't make assumptions of the motivations of your fans. You can't make assumptions of why they do the things they do. You can just look at the things they do and go, okay, do I like that or not? And if the answer is no, ignore it or ban them. <laughs> just move on with your life. Like, yeah, I like, agree. You know, I can't take it so fucking personally. It's, it's hard to say that because you don't really have much control over what you take personally or not. You know, um, it's, it's a mess. Um, uh, I am incredibly excited for Mario Maker 2, like you said, not only for us playing it, but to see other people play it. Um, mm -hmm. And I do hope it breathes new life into Witwick's stream. And I hope he gets his mental health issues under control. But I, I, while we're on the topic of mental health as it pertains to streaming and as, as it pertains to like people's personalities slowly getting toxic over time, just understand that that no human being who experiences mental health issues gets better. Like you don't just go, oh yeah, I was uh, I was depressed last year, but uh, you know I took <laughs> I took a Zantac and I'm good now. You know, like that's not how it works. Like it's it's a constant uh, journey. Like you're constantly going to have your ups and downs with it. Now you eventually learn how to deal with it better, but it's constant. And I feel like too many fans are just like looking at streamers. Like I wish they would just be the way they used to be. Like, you know, the, you, you understand that they're not a product, right? They're a person. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, and, yeah. and I, I know I'm not going to, I'm going to try to talk about this much because I know this is a touchy as fuck subject with a lot of people these days. But like, I used to love watching Cosmo, right? Right. Stream some, stuff, stream some fucking Zelda, dude. He was the best Zelda player there ever was to me. I loved watching his stream. I didn't care what, if he was playing Zelda or not. And then he had his, uh, he, he he's trans so he, yeah. he what, what do you call it just transition. reassignment surgery or a transition surgery I, he transitioned? i don't know if he actually had surgery okay but not. he did transition you can say yeah, transition he, yeah. yeah he did transition and it basically ruined his stream and not because people were just being hateful about his new gender views but just he he literally kind of went crazy yeah. And I, I don't know if it's because of like some medicine he got on. I, I do not know what happened to him. Like he still streams every now and then, but he's a little crazy. And I, and that sounds like I'm being an asshole, but like, I just, I can't watch it anymore. It's, it's like, yeah. it's like a train wreck every time he's live yeah. and he has, he, has, he still has plenty of, of loyal followers and he's got a lot of trolls in chat, obviously because of his transitioning thing. Mm. But, uh, I, I just can't watch him anymore, no matter what he's playing, and not because of him transitioning, just because of the way he acts now. Yeah, like I don't, I don't know if he's just mentally scarred well, uh, from people fucking with him or what. But I, I just, I, I can give you several examples. I don't know them by name, and this is a shame because they need signal boosting. But there are pre several people out there who have transitioned who still retained their personality and still retained a really strong sense of humor about it. Um. Uh, I'll give you one example. There is a uh, a YouTuber now who is a uh, transgender male to female. And I see this gif all the time where it, it'll be like, people ask me all the time, well, do you feel like a man or do you feel like a woman? And I tell them, I mostly feel like shit. <laughs> so, uh, I, I, I don't feel like transitioning should necessarily change your personality because theoretically you are just becoming the person you wanted to be. And yeah. so if that's, that's who, uh, cosmo wants to be and you're not enjoying their stream anymore then i don't think you can be faulted for that and, and to be fair it may not have had anything to do with that he may have just gotten to a point in his life where he just had a psychotic break because yeah. like like, like I, i'm serious i like if, if you just go watch him sometimes he'll just go live and do nothing but cry and scream and it's just like no no one wants to watch this yes yeah like i, I don't know and i hate it for him i, I do miss him just like i miss Witwicks, you know 
We- yeah. Weird tangent to get off on, but uh, yeah, there's that. Super Mario Maker 2 coming out this month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, let's, let's rate some Nintendy. <laughs> Only at GameStop. Trade in your dick for Super Mario Maker 2. Let's rate uh, some Nindy. Um, <laughs> I gave Xbox an 8. I can only give this one a 7. Yeah. Yeah, um, I, I don't... Uh, I'm, I, you know, if I'm looking at it as a whole, like, I'm excited for a couple of games on this list, but, you know. Yeah. Well, I'm in the same boat as you, only one... The, I, you know, both Banjo my has to bump me up, now that I think about it. Just because they finally put Banjo out there, I have to give it at least an 8. Okay. All right. So they tied Microsoft for you. Yes, I will. I will okay. say that because they finally fucking banjoed their ass off. Yes. Okay. Well, for me, even with banjo, um, the 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 shitty like, oh, we're still porting old games. No one cares about. Kind of yeah. counterbalances that just to me personally. Yeah. Like I have not played my Switch in months. Like right. I, I played the hell out of Smash. There's nothing else for me to play. Yeah. I don't care. There's just nothing for me to play. So like, I don't really care about my switch. I don't really care about Nintendo right now. Like they can't, they can't seem to get online. Right. They, they, they're still, you know, they only care about what Japan thinks and you know, it's working for them. I guess they have more money than God, but, uh, I'm going to give them a six. I gave Microsoft a seven and square a seven, but, uh, Nintendo's right behind them with a six. Their conference wasn't complete ass. I just, it just didn't interest me as much as the other two. Right. And so there you have it. Another E3 filled with such exciting things as games that we expected and ones that we didn't. (laughs) 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 With now starring Keanu Reeves. Now starring Keanu Reeves. Spooky. (laughs) Spooky Keanu Reeves. Um, you know, like I don't know how to phrase this, so I'll word vomit it. Uh E3 2020 needs to give me a reason to be excited for new consoles which is going to be I, I hard i really think i, I think it'll be hype cuz yeah. i think when when the ps4 and xbox 1 were announced aside from xbox they got shit on yeah but, but that e3 as a whole was hype cuz it was two new consoles and that's what we're going to be dealing with next year and now that i think about it you know they've had enough time to really examine why that console generation bit the bed and it, it makes me kind of think that they'll come straight out the gate and be like all right so this console is completely backwards compatible has cross-platform multiplayer and cross saves and it's a keurig <laughs> like uh, I, f- I feel like that th- there is a strong chance that they'll be like all right so we you know the last console we put a lot of stuff in there that we thought would be great and it turns out we don't know dick about what you want so here's what we what you want <laughs> so like, i was real disappointed in microsoft this time for not announcing a new banjo game because they own that ip uh and i was hella expecting fable 4 yeah i would like to see fable come back I started to say let's rate e- this E3 overall. God, I d- it's just hard to have a frame of reference. I feel like every uh, E3 yeah. I've really analyzed the entire time we've been doing this has just been worse and worse and worse. So let's not rate it. Let's just walk away from it knowing we still love games and we still love to shit on games that we feel like don't deserve any credit. Yeah. <laughs> like. Okay, I get behind that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so is there anything else that we want to talk about as a part of this podcast, considering it was the first one? I got a couple things in mind that I want to mention before we sign off, but I'm going to let you say anything you want to say. Uh, I, I don't think so. Uh, did, did we fully agree on the name? Like, is that what it's called for sure? Club F, unless you've got yeah. a better idea. I really, a fan suggested broop.wave, and I really like the way that looks. And there is a part of me that kind of wants to give it this, like, you know, those, like, like chill music to study to <laughs> streams <laughs> like yeah. i like don't get me wrong that's kind of what i want to rip off like i, I want to always have like a really cozy like cinemagraph in the background and put some like ambient sound because i kind of want to theme the whole podcast around just like cozy conversations with friends um so i don't mind it being club f i don't mind it being bro op dot wave i i i don't want to keep moving forward with this whole i will name it later i don't necessarily mind that with some things but i i do want it to have some kind of name 
Uh, names yeah. are more of how the owners feel. Fans can name them, but the real right goes to the dudes who make made it. Brown mustard. Well, what if what? I don't know. Maybe we do this. Maybe look, we explained what Club F is at the big, very beginning of this. I want you to keep all that in here. Mm-hmm. So we explained what all that is, and then mm-hmm. we just mentioned the the broop dot wave. Is that what she said? Yeah. Okay. Let Let's maybe put it to a vote. And yeah. just leave this, leave this one, leave this specific one unnamed until that voting is over, and yeah. then and then we just make an executive decision regardless yeah. based of on what it's looking like. Yeah, yeah, that's that, yeah. Okay, that sounds good. Now, what I wanted to say is this: um, the past couple of years, Bro Up have been very very productive. Um, I think getting the partnerships that we've gotten have really boosted my ego and made me feel more official. But that said, we have stagnated and not in terms of content. I think our content is still great, as great as it ever was, if not getting better. But our subscription numbers aren't going up. And, you know, we always get the fans is just like, ah, that doesn't matter. It's just like, man, I love you. Thank you for your support. It matters to me. Like, I, I want to know that we're growing. I want to know that people are continuing to appreciate what we do. And more and more people are learning about what we do. Um, so, uh, we've had a lot of really positive, constructive conversations lately. Um, the Patreon that launched last year around this time has really helped us. And we've got money now that we can put towards, uh, advertising that might help. Um, we've got money to put towards. We recently, in case any of you wanted to know where your money was going, Chase has a computer that can run current generation games now. (laughs) Hell, I'll tweet, I'll tweet a picture of it right now. Do it. Um, and you know, that's, that's all thanks to you guys. Like he's going to take over streaming responsibilities again. Uh, I know I've said that like six or seven times, but you know, we, he finally got it built and then he went on vacation for a while. So like that was part of it. Um, and, uh, after this podcast, he and I are going to have some more conversations, um, about the channel and, uh, some shit that we're going to do. Um, I know that we have had this 35 patron goal for a while, I'm probably just going to go ahead and say, uh, fuck it. We can't count and slide it to 25 because I'm ready to go ahead and have this community server for you guys. Ultimately, it's just, I want it as bad as you guys want it now. And I j- I'm just ready to move forward with it. So he and I are going to talk about server hosting for that. We're going to announce that soon. Um, but ultimately as always keep doing what you're doing. Um, I feel like we had a strong push of people coming out to streams there for a while that just slowly fizzled out. And what can I say? I guess I can't blame you for that, but you know, how do I phrase it? If the problem is that you don't know about streams, I am doing everything I can. If the problem is, is that our content is not entertaining, tell me why. There's an anonymous uh, feedback link in the Discord that you can use. Just shit on me. <laughs> just tell me exactly what you dislike and I will fix it. I just think too many people just click in, goes gay, and leave. And they, they don't give us the feedback that we need to improve. But ultimately, if it's just, I don't like the game you're playing, what the fuck can I do? I guess you don't like the game we're playing. That's okay. That's fine. (laughs) Yeah. Like when we were playing, when we were playing Crackdown, a lot of people were just being honest. I remember Mayo was just like, man, I love you guys. I can't watch this game. (laughs) And I was just like, I respect that. We're going to play it because we have been fucking excited for this stupid game (laughs) for a while. (laughs) So we're going to play it. (laughs) And it was stupid. (laughs) But. Uh, you know, just keep doing what you're doing. We really appreciate you. Um, I hope you guys are liking the changes to the Patreon. If there's anything that's you're not sure if it's working out, you let me know. Um, I had to fix a couple of things to do with the roles that you get in Discord. If you're not on our Discord, you should be because like a lot of the benefits that we're doing are going to be through Discord now. Uh, for example, I'm about to recognize everybody that is currently listed as a undead host or higher who I can see in the Discord chat. I want to go ahead and um. I want to go ahead and recognize those people as the sponsors of today's podcast episode. Okay, so, um, random asshole, Kaj. <laughs> That's his name. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> uh, random asshole, Kaj Nwosu, Jim Silver, um, Fade22, Creeper Boss49, um, Brown Mustard. <laughs> Because he named himself that today because we were making fun of him <laughs> about the way that he constantly renames himself. Uh, you guys are the sponsors of today's episode. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to our other patrons. Thank you so much to our trust subscribers. Thank you so much for our moms for making us genetically. <laughs> Thank you so much to our fathers. It's Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Yes. Yeah. If you're a father, 
I hope you don't regret your decision. Uh, happy Father's Day, I meant to say. <laughs> you know, it's not always a decision. <laughs> like, sometimes it's just, oh no! <laughs> and then, <laughs> you still there? No. No, okay. Chase is gone, everybody, we're finished. <laughs> Ran random asshole on chat says, whoops, there's a baby. <laughs> <laughs> it's just you know, there's just a baby instantly is that how it works i want this randomly in the podcast it's I just all gonna to... be in there okay all right <laughs> fuck damn uh, calm down there listen. shit listen no you listen all right <laughs> i found i found a picture on the persona 5 reddit subreddit that i found funny okay you know people been begging for that game to come to the switch now because Joker got into Smash. And if you've played Persona, you know that every time you get a new Persona, they say, I am thou, thou art I. And then they mm. say something, uh, something special after that. But this says, I am thou, thou art a bitch. Persona 5 is not coming to Switch. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was awesome. Fuck yeah. Okay. Um, I can't say for sure when this is going to happen. But um, uh, recently for our Patreon ad video that we put out, uh, we collaborated with two people. We collaborated with the Mr. Mayo, who did all of our new Patreon art. Thank you again so much for that. And we collaborated with um, the DadBod podcast, our friend Kyle, who uh, does commission work for songs. And he uh, did a couple of songs. Um, one of them is a like 80s, 90s metal riff to the uh, some horrible lyrics I wrote a long time ago as a joke. Um and then the other one is one that you may have already heard before on our stream, which is a lovely little ditty called um, Poop Shoot Blues. Um, so he plugged us on his podcast recently. He wants me to guest on his podcast, and I eventually want him to guest on ours. We will occasionally have guests pulled in to talk about certain topics. And um, he I haven't told you this yet, Chase. He has given me permission to put both of those songs in full as MP3s on our Patreon. So, um, if you are a Patreon uh, pledge and you have pledged at Lich Hunters or higher, you will have access to the full versions of both of those songs soon. So, keep an eye out for those things. We're going to go ahead and sign this bitch out. Check on the poll. I'm sure there will be one by the time that this is live for other people to look at. I will, instead of doing it as a Discord poll, I'll probably do it as like a twit, a tit, twit, titter, titter poll. Twitter poll. <laughs> yeah, calm down there, Eminem. <laughs> I'll leave it as a Twitter poll and then I'll I'll link to it. Thank you guys. Good night. Good night.